Hi, I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography. Today we're starting a new series on watermarks. Um, we will see later the different reasons as to why you would want to add a watermark to your image and how I would recommend you do. Um, and we'll go from Photoshop, we'll also use Lightroom as well. But today we're going to focus on one particular issue and we're going to do it within Photoshop. You may have encountered a problem where you have a logo already. However, that logo comes with a colored background or white background. And therefore, it's not that great to apply to your photograph because usually you tend to go for some kind of transparency. So the logo uh, is a little bit less visible and much better. Uh, uh, with the overall image. So uh, let me show you an example of a logo that one of you guys sent me last week. Uh, Fabris sent me this and as you can see it's a very small size but it will do just fine for the exercise. It's a, it's a nice logo however the background is pure white. You'll notice we have a JPEG file and JPEG does not uh, recognize transparency. So how do we do to get rid of this white background and turn it into a transparent background? So very easy, I must admit. We could use different selection tool. We've already talked about different selection tools in the past from uh, inside Photoshop, but today I want to show you another one, which I think will work much better. And that is to go to the select menu and go color range. Color range is a very, very powerful tool. We will go back to it many times over in the future to talk about development and so on, uh, but it's a very good one. Um, basically, what you find when you have this uh, panel here, this color range panel, well, first off is how you're going to make your selection. And for that, you've got different options. Either you're going to use the droplets and select particular pixels um, uh, and the color of that pixel to define your selection, or you can apply it within uh, a different range of tone, like red, yellow, green, and science, and so on. For example, if I was to select red here, you could see here in this little window, which zone would uh, be uh, selected. And so I would still use a droplet to define, but it will be within that zone. Uh, here in this particular case, because we have a white background, I would actually go for highlights. And here we have, we have the highlights, but it's very difficult to see it, right? Because you see it here, but you do not see it in the image. And that's where you have the, pre the selection preview option. If you go to grayscale, basically what is white is basically what is being selected. What would be gray would be partially selected. What is black, it's absolutely not selected. You also have black matte and that works pretty much the same way. And you can actually say how much of the, for example, the orange here would actually be selected um, or partially selected. Uh, you can go for white matte, and that depends on the color of your background, really. If you were to have a black background, that would probably help you a lot as well. Uh, and then the last one is a quick mask. You use different uh, colors to, uh, to show you. In this particular instance, I think grayscale will work just fine. We then have the fuzziness. So basically here, the more you increase, you see the fuzziness, which is basically the tolerance value, um, it helps you define how much uh, of a uh, highlight uh, tone you want to include in your selection. As you can see, the more I increase this orange, you remember this was orange, if I remove the preview, you see this orange yellow thing uh, will disappear. Uh, it will be part of that selection and I don't want that. So I need something somewhere that is going to retain that selection. But then look at details right here. The, if I actually go at zero, then I'm going to end up having some, I would say pollution, some parts in between here, which I believe should be uh, white and part of that selection. So I think somewhere along the way here should not be that bad. Remember, I'm dealing with a very small file here uh, and, uh, and so not so great quality. Then is the range. It's basically how much do I want to add. So if I go to the max, you can notice that here there are some tones that are brighter than others. Uh, if I remove the preview, you can see it. Um, it's those little artifacts that we have around the letters here uh, that would basically, if I go to grayscale again, they will not be selected and I want that to be removed. So I'm basically going to reduce the range and increase you say until I get something that is pretty clean. And I think here the result is not bad. It, it might not be perfect. As I said, the, size, the file is very small. 
And I think that will do just fine. And now I click OK. The trick here is that basically you get one uh, action to remove this background. And that's basically your finger meeting this delete or backspace button. However, if I do this now, look what happens. I have the fill panel opening, which would be great if I wanted to fill that selection with a color. But as you notice, I don't have transparency here selected. So instead, what I need to do is I'm going to cancel. Look at the Layers panel. If you don't see the Layers panel, go to Window and Layers. But here on that particular layer, you notice that we have a padlock, which means that this particular layer is partially locked. But if you click on it, it's no longer locked. And look what happened. Once again, the finger, the Delete or Backspace button, and I deleted the background. And that's basically it. Then if what you next do is Control or Command D on the Mac to deselect the whole thing. And then, so now that you've done that, let's look at the before and after. This was before, this is after. Now, the crucial step is for you to save that file as a different in a different format. I told you that file was given to me as a JPEG, so obviously it could not be transparent. But if you do save as, now you have the options to actually save it as a PNG. You could save it as a TIFF, but let's face it, there's... In the watermark, there's not much interest in having it in a TIFF. It's going to make a bigger file, and you don't have several layers. I really don't see the value in having a TIFF file for that particular purpose. So here, PNG is perfect. You will use that as a logo on your image. It will work fine with Lightroom, and you could even use it on the web if you needed to put it on a, a web page uh, of some sort. And then you save. I have already have an existing one. I just replace it. And here, compression. I like to have the smallest file possible and interlace not. And that's it. I hope you found that easy uh, and interesting and maybe it will help you along the way of creating your perfect design. In the next episode we'll see how to actually create sign your own paper and then use that signature as your watermark on your photograph. You'll see it's a very similar approach. So until then this is Tom Miggett saying if you like it well capture it. Ciao.